So Pastor is on Blog Talk Radio, guys. <laughs> That's why he's not talking to us anymore. So, what did everybody have for dinner? <laughs> we had goulash, and we had fried chicken, and broccoli, and cauliflower salad. It was kind of a buffet, but very good. Okay, so let's let's do this for a second. Call her. Hold on just a second. What's your first name, man? Chris. Now, for those of you that's with us on blog or on Facebook and YouTube, uh, Brother Chris has called in on Blog Talk Radio, and I find I found a way to be able to ask, have them ask a question because Brother Chris, I get a lot of really bad people across here who try to do bad things on radio. So I like to be able to take you in the screen room and talk a little bit so we don't have a wicked person get on and try perverting everybody with their nastiness. So the cool thing is um, I'm able to talk to you like this and find that out. Now, I've got viewers with me on YouTube Live and on Facebook Live, and um, I would like to put this question up for everybody to hear, and then we'll answer it. <coughs> So let's see if this works, because I thought I just found something new out that I'd never seen before broadcasting, but, but it seems like it may not have worked like I thought it was going to. Because <laughs> I, I, I seem to be able to talk to you now. Let's see if you can hear me like this. Can, can you hear me talking at all? Isn't that something? This thing give us feedback. Everybody pause just a minute. Everybody on Facebook Live is like, Pastor, what's happening tonight? Well, so back to supper. <laughs> your show now, press one. To, hear important to start the show now, so press one. You're calling back into a live show. We are reconnecting you now. Well, all right then. Well, all right then. <laughs> let's see what we got now so let's try this brother chris are you there yeah can you hear me hey there you go all right all right so now we're live what's your question tonight not live okay that's what we're looking for a live audience and this is a live performance. Amen? Yes, we're listening to you, Chris. Hello. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of listening to you, too, you know. So uh, where are we going? <laughs> um, Saturday night is always <laughs> Saturday night is always our Saturday night live where we have a question and answer session. And we kind of just answer any question about the Word of God. And... Um, it always has a uh, a uh, path of its own, but it's always based only in the Word of God. And so when I said a minute ago, if you have a question, click the one button and you can ask it. You click the button. So I came to you. Okay. So uh, I'm here now. And uh, if anybody has a question about concerning from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, all the way to the end in the book of Revelation. Anybody has a question about anything between those two points, I would love to jump in and shed some light <laughs> and let them get what they're going to get from it, you know, because there's a lot of good things going on when the light's on, baby. And when the light's on, it's clear. It is clear. It's clear. Especially when we're talking God, that's the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, you see yourself on the inside. And so there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And we don't want to miss anything now, do we? Amen. Yeah. Let's get this. Get the, let's get the show on the road. Hey, what question is there? Let's, it's, a, it's from Genesis to Revelation. Let's just get in. Where do you want to go? I mean, I always like to start at the beginning, but that's just me. Well, and, and where we always start... Uh, our program is uh, we're just communication with everybody. And then um, we always have the Pledge of Allegiance. We honor our troops. 
and then um, pray for America. And then we get our program started and we always end with communion. That's just how things run around here. And um, we've been doing this now since the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, it's uh, been a very, very, very powerful time of understanding, insight, wisdom, growth, development, seeing people healed of horrible things, wonderful God doing a powerful work and uh, setting people's lives free. So that's what usually happens. So I think this is what we're going to do right now is we're going to go back to what our beginning usually is. And that is what everybody have for supper. (laughs) Right now, tonight we have Michigan and Alabama and Michigan and Ohio and Michigan and um, North Dakota. Those are the ones I can see. Malaysia and Singapore. Pakistan will be on in a little while. Africa's usually with us. And um, <clears throat> so we like to always say, hey, guys, what would you have for supper? We had goulash. We had goulash. And fried chicken. Fried chicken and watermelon. And broccoli. And, and broccoli salad. How about you, Chris? What'd you have for supper? I haven't had any supper yet, but I'm sure getting Uh-oh. hungry listening to y'all talking about food now. I'm just like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm just thinking, what am I going to have for supper now? I'm like, well, let me just see here. <laughs> what's your, I don't know, but it's got to be good. It's got to be good, though. What's, what's, what state are you calling from? I'm in California. California. Wow. California. That's where my daughter and son in law live. Oh, right on. Well, that's cool. They're over here with me in the heat, and it's on the street. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's probably on the street and in the air and everywhere else. Yes, love. YouTube. Know, YouTube. It feels like it's like you feel like you're walking around in the oven, you know, at a convention. You're like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, it, it's a pretty warm yeah, it's hot. You know what's interesting, though, is that uh, is that I don't really have any worries, you know. I mean, when I when I used to worry, I used to worry a lot because I had a thinking problem, and I was thinking about this and that and the other thing, and then people would come over with some more stuff to think about, and I was just I was like thinking about this and this, and I mean, I was just like it was like they had me as an audience member, and I was captivated by what they were saying. And I was thinking, and they would point to the Word of God, and I would go look at the Word of God, and and I would say, oh, yeah, okay. And and it would make me feel like God is talking to me, and I need to obey Him because of what they're saying, and they're pointing to the Word. And I got stuck in that for years, but it wasn't really like I was stuck in it. It was like more like I had diapers on. And I was just a kid, a little kid, you know, and I was growing up in this stuff. And pretty soon I wasn't in those diapers no more. And now I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm a big kid now, you know. And because I eat the word of God, you know. Remember Jesus, he was the only true Israelite in the word that was able to eat every word that proceeded out of his father's mouth. We know that Adam didn't do that because God says, because you listen to the woman, meaning that he didn't listen to what Yahweh was saying to him, and he went ahead and listened to something else. Well, that's breaking covenant with God. And God clearly shows you this. Okay. And so I, I, I'm a big kid now, and I love it. Because you know how kids are, right? They, they just love to have a good time. Dad's right here. We don't have to worry. It's my daddy's bigger than your dad. You understand? <laughs> and if I, uh, 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 you know, if my daddy says, go ahead, jump, you know, and you just jump because you know he's going to catch you every time. It's having a good time with dad. You know what I mean? So we're praising God today because God is good, not just when you feel like it, not just sometimes. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. And when you, and, and, and God in all these areas of your life concerning Christ working in you watching. so wonderfully, by the way, and through you into other people's lives, because God's not just having a relationship with you, sweetie. No, he's having a relationship with these people out here, and you don't want to get in the way what God's doing in your life or get in the way what he's doing in their life, because that would make no sense. Now, would it? No, of course not. We don't want to go there. That's what we're talking about, staying in love, 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 love. 
because love generates love. You know, worry generates worry. But love. All right, all right, love. hold on. Got to slow the preaching down a little bit here. We <laughs> we got to get back to supper. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. So I'm thinking, uh, I'd like to get a salad going on. You mentioned a salad, you know. A salad would be really good. You know, it's nice and cool, right? And yummy. Tomatoes. Um, I would have to say. All right. All right. Well, you, you don't get to come on and take over the show. That's how that works. So we got to have a little bit of peace here. Now, so how's everybody doing? Welcome. Let's get everybody involved. Yes. We have a we have a big old family here. We had some pizza in Lansing, Michigan, and baked chicken in Garden Greens, and and uh, I'm not sure where that city is, but uh, that's Sister all right. Sunday. Sister Sunday, chocolate graduation cake from the grandson, sauerkraut, okay. bread, pork chops, no bones, a glass of milk. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. I didn't see what Brother Dan had, though. Just sent along a message to you. Did you get it? Well, let's just check and see from Brother Gary. <clears throat> fast is over. <laughs> the fast is over. It sounds like the fast is over. <laughs> well... We welcome you. We got lots of people. Got two callers on tonight. Things are really going to be happening here. Hang on. I got to see if I can find this message from Brother Gary. Brother Gary had some stuff happening this week. Some good stuff happening. We need a quarter house on the grill, too. I did not get your message, Gary. I don't see it, brother. I have checked my email and my messenger. So I'll be glad to hear porterhouse on the grill. Wow, that's nice. That's good. Sauerkraut and bread, pork chops, no bones. So it's good. It's good eating tonight, isn't it? Now, usually, usually we're sitting at the picnic table. Uh the last, the last week we've been sitting at the picnic table, and I really wanted to be there tonight and actually felt like I ought to be there tonight. However, this air conditioning feels really nice, doesn't it? <laughs> so, seems like our callers have an audience, so they went away. Uh, isn't that an interesting factor? Um but you might find that to be the case in a lot of situations in the end times is if people don't have an audience with a bunch of people watching them, then many times they just go away. Why? Because they want to be the center of the attention. It's one of those cool identifying factors of the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you just show them a little bit of not attention, then they, then you see whether or not, they want to be a part of what's going on with everybody else. Uh, and for those of you that might say, well, Pastor, what if he had something good to say? He'd have stayed on. And his friend that came on with him would have stayed with him. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And on we go. And on we go. <laughs> now, it is now 25 after or 35 after or something. And uh, we're glad to have you guys with us tonight. It's going to be a fun night. Um, we're going to study the word of God and we're going to answer some questions. Now, I, I know the last couple of nights I've been dealing with this hundredfold return. It might be a really good thing for you to ask some questions about. Why? Because in those questions comes growth. Now, I don't see Mary Pastorick yet, so somebody call her and say, hey, Mary, wake up. Did you send um, any shares? I sent all of my shares. All right. Was Mary on that list? Yes. Right. Donna and Chris and all the rest of them. So uh, 
What I love about Sister Mary Pastorick is she'll just ask a question. I think many of us have a question that would help other people. Here's the benefit of asking it. When you ask a question, it causes everybody to say, well, yeah. And then somebody else asks this. Somebody else says that. Somebody else says that. And the next thing you know, we're going. And we've all left a bunch of junk in the past that's not going to do us any good. And we're able to move on and get some. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I think it's really cool. Brother Phil's sitting right here on the couch with us. It is. And Brother Phil has amazing testimony. <laughs> Brother Phil's been with us all out. day long. Now, um, I got to tell you, we got a, I woke up this morning praying for our brother. Amen. Thank you. And, and I said, Lord, he came here on a roofing job. All right. And I said, Lord, help, help his boss find him. When we met him this morning, saw him, the boss had driven up to him on a side street and said, I got work for you tomorrow. Amazing. Amazing. God is so good. I think the better one is the officer saying, can I get yeah. you to, where can I do to help the office? A, a police officer said, can I do to help you? That's Literally cool. like 30 or 40 minutes after I talked to my boss, I talked to that officer, and he was like, what can I do to help you? Everybody wants to help me today. <laughs> Thank God. <you> know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll do it again. Everyone was amazed by the prayer you sent. Some folks even took pictures of it. There was 150 bikes. Great fellowship. Can't thank you enough. Hey, see, that's what we're about. Brother Gary was in charge of. Um, or whether he was in charge or not, but he was a part of, as you can see his words, 150 bikes that just escorted the one of the Vietnam moving walls um, in into Manistee, Michigan. They always have the moving wall there, and it's a place for the Vietnam veterans to go and kind of heal. and And um, it's a great it's a great thing that they do, and. Uh, Brother Gary uh, texted me and said, hey, Pastor, would you would you send me a prayer I could pray? And so I took off and did it, man. I'm like, wow, yeah. I got so inspired, I wrote a, I wrote a prayer that lasted five minutes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that's the one you prayed or not. But then I thought, well, yeah, I might ought to send one a little shorter than that. So send him another one. But well, that's good to hear, Brother Gary. And if you've never been to a moving wall situation, um, it's very honorable. It's a, it's actually quite a holy place. Uh, because you have Vietnam veterans that's never been to the memorial in Washington, D.C., may not ever be able to get there. And yet these men have built a, a small wall that they can move into a community and has the same names, it's built the same way. And every time I've been to one of these, that whole park becomes a holy sanctuary because of the honor that will be in there. And uh, I, I'm telling you right now, um, it's a good, it's a beautiful thing. And and um, the one Brother Gary's a part of is in Manistee and it's going probably through tonight and tomorrow. If you're anywhere close there, it'd be a good thing for you to go and be a part of. <clears throat> In Jesus' mighty name. Now, who knows where we are? So, as soon as I get that message, I'll, I'll post some pictures of it up on... Uh, we'll get some pictures put up on the website so you can see it, the, the Facebook page. Um. So you can see it. I still don't have your message, though, brother. Did you send it through Messenger? Email? Email? I don't know. Email. I don't see it. But that's why I keep telling you guys, if you send me a message and I don't reply to you, make sure you send it again because that just means technology didn't work. Brother Phil, Brother Phil on the phone, 
And we literally spent two hours at Walmart or some ridiculous thing trying to make the stupid things work. God hears them all. Even when you're full of tears and can't form words. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Check him out so I know what we're looking at. Welcome, that guy. We're glad to have you with us. And, um, yeah, that's good. Now, I want us to uh, now rise, make a pledge of allegiance, and um, honor our troops, and we'll get started in our evening as we should be going. And, uh, We'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, and thank you for being here and being a part. Yeah. Here we go. Render your honor, let's make our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. and. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a moment of silence as we remember we're missing in action. Those who have paid the last full measure of devotion, those who are wounded in their spirit, their soul. This moment of silence is in honor of those who serve alongside of them and those who have served this great nation. This moment of seconds in honor of the 21 rifle volleys at the funeral of a fallen soldier. This moment of silence will begin now. And now join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountain to the prairie. To the ocean, white with foam, God bless America, my home sweet home, God bless America, my home sweet home. And now we'll pray the United States of America. God and Father of every brave warrior down through American history, <clears throat> we thank you for this creation that we get to live and be a part of. Thank you for every brave warrior who shed his blood and is now in the great cloud of witnesses in heaven cheering us on. We join our voice with their voice today and we declare God bless America. May God bless America. All the way around the world and all around this nation tonight. There are great prayer events, patriotic events happening. Many patriots are standing at attention, listening to someone speak, praying prayers now, saying, forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our 
land. We turn from our wicked ways and we seek your face. Thank you, Lord, that you are alive and well and working. Thank you that in the book of Thessalonians, you said we are the force that is resisting the evil and is actually we are the force on the earth and all evil can do is resist it, can never stop it. Thank you that you gave us power over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt us in any way. And we give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, thank you that you've given this ministry an assignment. You've assigned us to reach into this world and help every person we can help with the powerful anointing of Almighty God, the blessing of God that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. You've helped us to be able to take your word, put it in bite-sized pieces, and cause it to transform the lives of every person around us. We give you glory for it, Lord. We've gathered together tonight as the community of faith, a community that has gathered and has been brought together by you to establish faith, to establish your word, to live in righteousness, and to change our community for the things of God. And we do that in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we stand together in unity tonight. And you said, there's a commanded blessing of the Lord that comes upon us. We receive that blessing now. Want to do it? Just lift your hands and say, I receive your commanded blessing in my life right here, right now, tonight, in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, you said where two or three of us are gathered together, you are in the midst of us, and your will will be done on this earth as we speak it done in heaven. Here we are again tonight. We speak over the the the, uh, the United States government. We speak over the, the uh, legislative branch, the judicial branch, the executive branch, and we say, Lord, bring revival. Amen. There's a bunch of wicked folks up there. Bring revival in our government, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. May they fall on their knees in the hall of government and repent of their sin and receive the righteousness of God. May the figurines, may the, may the walls that look like Moses and Abraham and have the Ten Commandments, may they speak to those senators and representatives and cause them to fall on their face and say, I'm a sinner. I need Jesus. I'm turning from my wicked ways and coming to you now, Jesus, mighty name. We, we declare it right now. The good politicians stay good. And the bad ones turn from their ways. Every one of the innocent people flee. They flee from the wicked. And those who refuse to change. Bring your judgment, Lord. Bring your judgment. Those who pervert the ways of America on purpose to destroy us, remove them. We're not waiting for the next election. We say we the people of the United States would fire a liar and a thief and a cheat in our business. So when you're that as a politician, we say you're fired. And it doesn't matter that Donald Trump had a program that said the same thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because when you're a bad employee, then you get fired. Thank you, Father, that all around this world and this nation, all through the church and the body of Christ, all through our government, we declare deliver us from the foolish, wicked people that would stop us from being able to walk with you and the gift of God coming alive in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. <clears throat> in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And then, Lord, 
We pray for the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Coast Guard, our Secret Service, the FBI, Special Forces. We speak faith right now over every boot camp, wherever them our young people are. <laughs> Laying in the dirt, marching up a hill, <laughs> crawling through the mud. Wherever they're at, Lord, we speak that the greatest warriors America has ever seen happened today, this year, this summer, because of you. And we give you glory, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless our, all of the families of the fallen. Bless the families of the wounded. As Jesus said to the wounded and to those that were lame and maimed, he said, be made whole. And then he said, thy sins be forgiven. He said them both. And we call it to be now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Wow, Roger Oxy. Border Patrol. Father. May the border patrol guys be protected. That's a powerful statement. Those guys face it every single day. That's a task that seems almost impossible to a human being who has love and care and concern for people. We declare right now in the name of Jesus, the blessing of God upon this great nation. You want to say it with me? Forgive us of our sin, Lord, and heal our land. Heal our land. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we always pray, make a declaration that we make every time we come here against the isms that are trying to destroy the United States of America. Well, what are those, Pastor? Socialism, communism, feminism, modernism, male chauvinism, racism. Those are all wicked. And they come from the, the pits of hell because they're not in God. None of them are. And if you need to uh, study our teaching on that, we got a good teaching on that. Yes, we do. Start in March 21st and study every message from then till now, and you'll get the revelation. <laughs> Are we ready? Is it there? All right. Hold on just a second. Everybody pray this prayer with us. We bind all the effects of the isms. It is impossible for your weakness overcome the United States of America's <clears throat> righteousness, <clears throat> which is our strength. God said, touch not my anointed, anointed and, and do my prophet no, no harm. harm. You have, have no, no right or claim or, claim or historic authority to our promised land. land. We, know we know who we are. are. We, we will not yield our weapons of of protection to you. You may think we have been driven off, but we, the children of God, have returned to our God and have joined together in agreement to rebuild every wall that seems to be torn down in the realm of the spirit and in the natural. And we declare that every weapon you have formed against freedom comes back on you now. And every pit you have dug, you fall into it yourself immediately in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 144, verse 14. Our enemies will not invade our land. And, and there, there will be no breach in our walls. These are the walls that we are rebuilding. The walls of righteousness. That's a powerful prayer, isn't it? 
that prayer was written by, well, that prayer was written by um, C.C. Sheets and me. Now, you might say, well, I didn't know you knew her, Pastor. Well, I really don't know her. But I sure enjoy Dutch Sheets as giving 15 every day. Powerful revelation in the word of God. Uh, 15 minutes of prayer and devotion every day is powerful about prayer. And um, we were studying the book of Nehemiah in our noon prayer for America. And she wrote a little bit of it. And I had already started to write a prayer. And her prayer matched mine at the exact time I was, um, we were studying Nehemiah. And I'm like, check this out, man. That's God right there. So I added my parts and she added her parts. We don't know that we have written a prayer together, but we have. Here we go. And now the Patriot Prayer of Dedication. Is it there? Isn't that something? It showed up and then it left. It's still here online. Well, hallelujah. Then you start praying and I'll watch. Father, help us the living to be dedicated to the unfinished work which these fought for and so nobly advanced. Must, must be, be dedicated, dedicated to the great task that, that remains before us that from these honored fallen we, we take increased devotion, devotion to, to the cause for which they gave that last full measure of devotion. And we highly resolve that these shall not have fallen in vain, and that this nation under God is experiencing a new birth of freedom right here, right now, today. And this government of the people, by the people, for the people, Shall not perish, perish from, from this earth. earth. Long, Long will our land be bright, bright with freedom's holy light. Protect, protect us, Lord, Lord, by thy great might. Great, great God, our, our King. Forgive, forgive us of our sin, Lord, and, and heal our land. land. We seek, seek your face. In, In Jesus' name, name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Now, Last night I told you I wasn't taking an offering. Tonight I am. We need a monitor that can go up for the studio audience so that they can read what we're reading. <laughs> it's okay. We're not really taking that offering, okay? I was just a joke. <laughs> All right, here we go. So welcome, 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 welcome to Saturday Night Live. I didn't even have any poppers out. All right. Somebody start it again. Are you ready? Somebody do the drum roll. Woo! Woo! Saturday Night Live. Well, that popper kind of got popped because of. Look at there. Look at there. It's like. It's like. It, woo! You might say, Pastor, you guys always this crazy? Uh, no, sometimes we're crazy. Sometimes we, sometimes we just sit here and just sh shoot him at each other. I was trying to hit Leanne and hit Phil. That's a bad shot right there. That is a really bad, that is like five feet off. That's a bad shot. Now, isn't it funny how he unarmed us? Going, <laughs> now, not too long ago, Sister Leanne bought me this big popper. All right, and um, I tried one out. This thing's is just a dud. Well, do one right now. Maybe this next one will be better. It's a dud. I already told you. Maybe the other one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. 
Rocky. You know, next week we have a wild Rocky. <laughs> yeah, right. would tell you that you, <laughs> you have my age. Welcome, James. I saw Welcome, James. Yeah, yeah, bless you. you. Ready? Here we go. Everybody just party hard. You ready? Woo! It was kind of fun. It wasn't quite as noisy, but but the stuff's more fun. I mean, it didn't even go pop or nothing. It's like it didn't pop, but it is pretty. It's messy. Listen, this is what I know. It's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is what I know. Worth three dollars, that's for sure. <laughs> You're right. That not that is not a three dollar firework in my book. Now we're we're kind of having a really fun Saturday night here, which is usually what goes on. And uh, we want to welcome all of you to be a part of it. Sunday guys are welcome. Mr. That Guy, glad to have you here tonight. Going to be a good night tonight. And, um, you know, it's been a good week this week. Um, we've seen a lot of things happen this week. And uh, we've been in prayer for Julian and Vamala. And the surgery that he's in, I'm, that's happening here any day now. So if you guys are on, um, Julian and Vamala, we are glad to hear a report from you. Brother Gary's going to send me an email and we'll have a report on the motorcycle ride. <clears throat> We've already given you a report on Brother Phil and here he sits. Yay. Amen. And, um, you know, uh, hey, my mom's on. Hi, mom. Love you, mom. Hi, we love you. Everybody say hi to mom. Good to have you with us tonight, mom. I, I think the greatest thing about meeting Phil this week no, be careful. No, it's, <laughs> you're a great guy. It, I want to, um, I want to have. Uh, this is where we're going. Is everybody ready? Sure. Just like that, we got a revelation. Since nobody has asked any questions, I'm just going to take off preaching. <laughs> Now, and teaching, actually. It's going to be Saturday night teaching fun. Go with me to Acts chapter 1. Now, anybody that anybody in the know knows that Acts is um, the beginning of the church, the New Testament church. And uh, <clears throat> for whatever reason, I declare over my voice, my voice is unhindered in any way. Aww. Felicia says, Phil brought the southern mama side of me out, and I was worried about him all night. <laughs> <laughs> you had no idea you was coming to Williston and getting a family, did you? <laughs> I didn't know that. But I, I, I take the blessings that I get. Oh my God. So thank you, everybody. Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> uh, Saturday night is always a night where we have questions and answers. So, as we go through this, if you get a question, it comes to you or a thought, and it's like, wow, this is helping me see it in a different way, don't hesitate to share it. All right. Um, and then God always leads us on a very specific path. Um, I want to talk tonight about infallible proofs of God. Because the biggest thing that happened to me this week, meeting Phil, is God giving me an infallible proof. Now listen, I love being a blessing to all of you. I've, we've been a blessing to Phil. I love doing that. But God has spoken to me this week by sending you here. Now, I know God's spoken through me to him. 
I know that God has spoken through me to all of you. But God spoke to me through Phil. So I don't know if this is, I do know what this is. I have the Holy Spirit. This is a revelation. It's probably a little like two layers deep or something. Okay. Because all through your Christian life, <clears throat> you'll have trials, you'll have persecutions, you'll have afflictions, and the enemy may even try to hit you with sickness or disease. All right. God isn't one of those that does that to you. Trials come because you're doing the will of God and the enemy's trying to get you to stop. Yeah. All right. Persecution comes for the word's sake. When you start getting a revelation of God's word, persecution comes. Awesome. Some of you haven't had to fight much of it, but I know people whose whole family left them because they decided to walk with God. I know an old lady, all right? Now, for those of you in the 70s, that's not my wife. I'm going to tell you about my old lady, all right? <laughs> and I think she's actually gone to heaven now. But if she hasn't, she's 90, I would imagine. But literally, when she found a church like us and, and went to it, her whole family left her. Her husband said, if you go to that church, you'll find a new home. And me and the kids are gone and we will never come back. And that is exactly what they did. Wow. She literally had to, from that day forward, fight her whole Christian life by herself without her family, without ever being with her children. Because she stood in the word of God and knew who it was. And they went to some religious church that still didn't have, they didn't barely even know they were saved. And she's like, you guys can go do whatever you want to do. I'm walking with God. I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. And she did it all the days of her life. And she baked and sewed and did ironing to survive the rest of her life. Wow. You may not have ever faced that. But now I've got my second set of verses that have come to me. So we're starting in Acts, and then we're going to Matthew. All right? And then the cat. And then we're going to end up back in Mark. So this is going to be a good one tonight. I can tell already. Oh, no, it wasn't Christian at all. But Felicia, it was very religious of them. See, that religious demon looks like God, acts like God, talks like God, writes like God, presents itself as God, but always fights the true word. And if you've not ever seen it, we'll give glory to God, but most of all, stay in the word because it's going to happen and it's going to happen all around us. All right. Well, explain that. See, here we go. I haven't even read my verse and we're already going. Thank well, you for that statement. Well, and Felicia is wanting to hear um, Brother Phil's testimony. Just don't keep us in suspense. All right. Um, <laughs> when those people did that to that lady, they were saying she was off her religious rocker. They accused her of losing their mind. If you study, I, somebody look it up. Jesus' family literally came to him one time and said, you have lost your mind. His family came and said that to him. And the, you, if you will, look that up, that verse. Up. And it literally says that they came to take him away because they felt like he lost his mind. Well, I got a word for you. Jesus Christ did not lose his mind, and neither did that lady. But see, the spirit of religion 
which wants you to act like God, talk like God, look like God, but have no power, will now fight against you. Mark 3.21. Huh? Mark. Matthew, Mark, we're going to Mark 3, 21. I didn't even open the first verse up yet. And we're already going. Mm -hmm. Mark 3, 21. Yeah, that's good. This is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Let's read it. Well, Sister Felicia has now asked so many questions. I will be teaching for three hours tonight. <laughs> Don't you love it when that happens? Keep going. Keep going, Felicia. I'll be on here for five hours. I love it. We're going to Mark 3, verse 20. I'm going to summarize 13 through 19 is Jesus calling the disciples to him. Verse 20. The, multi came, the multitude came together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. When his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him. For they said, he is out of his mind. You may not have ever read that verse in, that verse before about Jesus. And the scribes who came from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub. And by the ruler of demons, he cast out demons. Watch what Jesus said. So he called them to himself and he said in a parable, how can Satan... Cast out Satan. And why would he? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No man can enter a strong man's house and plunder his good unless he first binds the strong man and then... He will plunder his goods. Now watch this. So Jesus' own people came to him and said, You are out of your mind. Now come with us. Have you ever had anybody say it to you? If you haven't, just hang on. Because it will happen to you sooner or later in the kingdom. <laughs> Have you ever been there? I can't say that I ever want to go back there again, but I am going to probably act like Jesus the next time somebody says, I'm out of my mind. Because I'm going to say, I ain't out of my mind. Have you seen the infallible proofs I saw this week? The miracle signs and wonders in people's lives set free. I'm not out of my mind. I now have the mind of Christ. As Sister Rebecca says, that's a big hallelujah and a Holy Ghost kick. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Let's go there. Now, remember those of you that use the real Bible. We're in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. And then we're going to Matthew 13. So get your fingers holding all the spots like you're supposed to be, like good students. <laughs> and... And listen, if you can't get it done, don't worry. They're going to leave them all right there in the comments. You'll be able to get to it later. Look at this. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Jesus wasn't just a teacher. He was a doer. All right. Verse 2. Until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, have get, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. In this chapter, um, verse 10, Jesus is taken up. Right? 
Can you imagine standing there watching your pastor? And then the, the disciples are standing there going, what do we do now, Peter? <laughs> Peter's like, <laughs> jump, John, jump. Grab him by the feet or something. Bring him back down here. That's it. And then the angels show up and say, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? And they're like, you see? <laughs> but verse three is where we're going. To whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Brother Phil had an infallible proof because he found us the second day. And then the boss found him. The boss found him after he said, Lord, help me find my boss. Right? That's an infallible proof. Now watch. Look at what it says. To whom he presented himself alive. When you and I begin to see these things, it is Jesus presenting himself alive to us. Now, here's my infallible proof from meeting Brother Phil. Do you know how much stuff God did to get Phil from Billings, Montana to Williston, North Dakota? And to get me sitting at that park bench. That is an infallible proof of almighty God. Because I'm going to tell you. I kind of enjoy this air conditioning like this. Right. I really enjoy having this extra monitor here. Okay. And I really like having this monitor. And I like having YouTube, Facebook and blog talk radio all running at the same time. But I love being outside. I'm an outside person. So the things that went on in our life to get us to that picnic table where Brother Phil, who came all the way from Billings, Montana, to here, it is Jesus showing himself alive to me, to Phil, and to all of you. Amen. The Father told me I will bring people from all over the world and all around the nation to you, and they'll be they'll need to hear the word that you speak. And look at how much the word has been a blessing to you already. It's not me. I'm a nice guy. But uh, nice guy ends after a while when you're fighting the devil. The only way you're going to fight the devil is you got to have Jesus on board. Nice guy goes a long ways in a lot of things. But you can be a really nice guy and the devil will beat the fire out of you if you don't know the name of Jesus. And the infallible proof that God showed me this week by bringing this man to me sitting on a picnic table in a park. Woo! Amen. Sister Felicia, I hope he brings Congress, Senate, and the Supreme Court justices to you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Maybe they'll bring Hardy. Maybe they'll come to eat at Hardy. Maybe they'll all come to eat at Hardy's. <laughs> now, wait. I met our senator. From, from North Dakota, I met him right over here at the at the bed park. Shook his hand. Matter of fact, he came and dedicated that memorial that day. Yeah. We have a monument post um, to the unknown. And so they called the, the our senator, our state senator, and um, asked him to come speak. Well, that guy didn't come speak. He came and preached a message. Yeah. He talked about salvation. Yeah. 
He talked about the blood of Jesus. He talked about the name of Jesus. And I went up to him afterwards. I said, well, one thing about you, sir, you ain't afraid to say Jesus' name. He goes, afraid? Ain't never going to be afraid of Jesus. He goes, he's the answer to the whole thing. Everybody in our city likes that man. They're not ashamed of him. They don't care what the Satanists think or in the rest of them. Who cares what those people think? This nation wasn't founded on that garbage. This nation was founded on God's holy word right there. Back to Acts 1 verse 3. Because Felicia almost sent me into politics. <laughs> she is real close, isn't she? That's like this really big rabbit hole that you can fit a whole um, herd of pigs down in that hole. That's a big one. I didn't chase it, though. Now watch. I want you to look at verse 3, Acts 1, 3. To whom he, Jesus, also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs. Now, what does that mean, Pastor? That means that the disciples just saw Jesus beaten, scourged, um, so far gone physically that he couldn't, he couldn't carry the cross. He couldn't do anything. They beat him, as the saying goes, within an inch of the life. Glad I didn't send the next comment. <laughs> but see, the disciples are now in hiding. They're thinking, we're next. I mean, Jesus, the last night, looked at the disciples and said, the sheep are going to be scattered. Can I have some coffee, love? Jesus said, the sheep are going to be scattered because the devil's coming after the shepherd. Well, then they watched Jesus get beat and and the crown of thorns. They were in the background watching. <coughs> Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me. Peter's like, no, I'm not. And a couple hours later, he denies it. Let's go look at one of those infallible proofs. Let's look at... Um, Oh, it's not John. Oh, it must be Luke. Hold on. It's actually Luke 24. And we're going to start at 13. And we're going to run down through 35. This is reading the Bible with Pastor Sam. John chapter 24, verse 13. This is one of those infallible proofs where Jesus showed himself alive and spoke to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Brother Phil came. We laid hands on him, prayed on him, prayed over him, and God totally fixed everything. Just like that. It's amazing to see. I mean, I've seen it over and over, and I just sit back and say, would you look at Jesus? Verse 13. Now, behold, two of the disciples were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus. This is Sunday after the resurrection, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. They talked together of all the things which had just happened. Well, naturally, they would. They just saw Jesus who cast out demons, healed the sick, raised the dead, confronted every political leader, and, and bowed to nobody. They just saw him die. Verse 15. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Can you, can you imagine? This is what I see, Phil. Here's Jesus. He's like, hey, Father. There's a couple of my disciples. Can I go be there? And Father's like, yeah. So Jesus just, and he shows up on the road. He just, I don't know. I think Jesus was a whistling. He Jesus just walked down the road whistling. 
uh oh, Phil's going. He's going to go get a cup of coffee, but it's okay. It's, it's all right. So here's here's Jesus walking down the road, and all of a sudden, here's the two boys, and he walks up. And, and I want you to get this. This is Jesus walking down the road, and he's like, he walks right up to the two guys that are his disciples that have been with him and begins to walk with them, but they can't see. Watch. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. That means Jesus is walking with them, and they don't know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another? As you walk and are sad. All right. 18. The, the one whose surname was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in all of Jerusalem? And have you not known that the things which happened there in the last couple of days? 19. He said to them, well, what things? You just got to love Jesus. Evidently, the coffee pot was turned off oh, because it? it's cold. Okay. Could you please warm my coffee pot? I will. I'll be glad to. Now watch. So they said to him the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth. It was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Can you imagine what happened when Jesus made people's limbs grow? People get eyes that didn't have them because Jesus healed the main. That means people missing an arm and if the arm grew. Yeah. Watch. 20. How the chief priests and rulers delivered him to be condemned and crucified. We were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day. Since these things happened, yes, and there were women of our company who arrived at the tomb early and astonished us. When they did not find his body, they came saying that he also had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went with them to the tomb and found it just as the women said. But him... They did not see. Uh, I'm interested in the fact that they didn't say, but they did find his face cloth um, folded on the end of the tomb landing. Now watch. These two disciples were like some of the rest of them. They thought Jesus was coming and setting up an earthly kingdom. And when they saw everybody be healed and raise the dead, they were like, can you imagine this guy is king? Who can touch you if you can raise the dead? Ain't nobody going to mess with a man raising the dead. What, are you going to kill my troops? I'll raise him from the dead. That'll mess up the enemy's mind right there. Now watch. 25. Jesus said to them. This is Mark. 24, 25. Oh, foolish ones. Jesus literally used the word foolish. And slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and then enter his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them, in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Now, verse 28. I love this. This is one of This is my most favorite story in all of Luke chapter 24. I just figured out how to say it. Did you see that? <laughs> I used to say it's my most favorite story in the whole Bible, but I can't do it anymore. But it is my most favorite story on page 1371. <laughs> Verse 28. 
Luke 24, 28. He drew near the village where they were going. He indicated he would go, would have gone farther. They said, no, 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 no. Stay with us toward evening. And the day is far spent. And he went to stay with them. Verse 30. Came to pass as he sat at the table with them. He took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to him. Then their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And he vanished from their sight. What is an infallible proof? When you and I see God working. Beyond the circumstance. Beyond the situation. It's when Jesus shows up to reveal himself to you. And show you the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Not religion. Not religiosity. Not churchianity, but show you the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now watch this. Verse 32, they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while we were walking and talking? And, and uh, so they rose up and they just walked seven miles out of town. And they're like, we're going back. We're telling them, guys, we saw them, man. So they turned around and went back from the 11 and those with them saying, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And then they told them what had happened to them. Now, now let's go back. I want to read Acts 1, 3 again because I want you to see this. God gave me an infallible proof this week with Brother Phil. God said, I know where you are, Sam. And I just brought a man, how many miles to Billings? 400, 500? Yeah, what was that? Five and a half hours, six hours. No? I just brought a man 500 miles and put him in the park so he could meet you and his life would be blessed and healed by God Almighty. And we're blessed by that fact. I I don't know what Brother Phil's thinking in his mind, and that really doesn't matter. I mean, it matters. You you matter to me, but I, I sit here tonight amazed at what God has done for me this week by allowing me to meet you. Now, all day long today, I was helping him get some things done, and I kept asking him, are you an angel or are you a human? He keeps telling me he's a human. This is what I know the book of Hebrews says. Entertain strangers because uh, some having done so have entertained angels. And if this is an angel, when he gets back to heaven, he's going to report. He took good care of me, sir. Why? Because uh, that's my duty. That's your duty. That's our duty on this earth. Look at verse 3, Acts 1, 3. Being seen by them 40 days. Speaking. Of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. When God shows you an infallible proof. He is showing you Jesus alive in your life. And that's when you open up your mind and say, Jesus, teach me about the kingdom of God. Because the greatest thing that God's wanting you to do is see the kingdom of God. Why? Because as soon as you see this kingdom, you are going to be a part of it because everywhere you go, everything you do, you're the one that brings the power of God into every situation, everywhere you go. I started walking around that park. That, that park is a wicked place. Now, we went there and met Phil, but I went there and um, dealt with some demons, some serious demons in that park. On purpose. To destroy the children. Guess what? You just met Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Harmon Park. 
And I ain't stopping because I'm the one that's got the d- dominion here. And I'm not di- I'm not dominionizing a single human, but you're not going to school our children in demons, devils, and witches because that's not who we are. Amen. And we all humans have a <laughs> Jesus was speaking to his disciples of the things pertaining to the kingdom. Listen to this. You and I, when we meet somebody who needs Jesus, you and I are the, the point of light and salvation and victory for that person. If somebody says, sir, will you pray for me? Put your hand out and start praying immediately. Why? Because they just ask you to pray for them. Here's what you got to do. You got to kick in the gear right now watching God do mighty works in people's lives. I I don't know how it's probably been. I don't even want to say those words. I want to say those words. It's probably been 20 years ago now. What is this? 2021? 15 years ago, I made a decision. I was no longer going to go home and pray for people. Long before there was Facebook, where I can just put a few little hands up and say that that's my prayer. Well, that ain't no prayer. That's a little click. And you put hands up. Did you actually say a prayer? Hey, Julian and Vamalas here, all the way from Malaysia. Hey, guys, we need to update how things are going. We love you, and we call you here. But this is what happened. I was standing the flag line with the Patriots and the bikers. And people would walk up to me and say, hey, preacher, pray for me. And so I would say, yeah, all right, I'll pray for you. But, I would, you know, I'd pray when I got home. And one day I was praying, just talking. To God. I was riding my Harley is what I was doing. And I was singing, this is the good life, riding my Harley, doing the work of the ministry. Who wouldn't want to be in that ministry? The guy that likes to drive a tractor. Okay, I got it. But, And he said, he said, son, why aren't you praying for people immediately? And I said, well, I'll explain that to me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a growing son. Say this with me. God is my father. So every conversation I have is about me growing up in God. See, God ain't never going to be about judgment unless you're doing wrong. If you're doing wrong, God can probably give you a whipping that's worse than your mama. And my mom is here. As soon as you get filled with the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you shouldn't do any more wrong. If you're filled with Jesus' righteousness, why would you do wrong? But watch this. So God is going to continually be leading you and growing you and developing you. So when he said that, I'm like, well, explain to me what you mean. He said, when those people walk up to you, those bikers walk up and say, preacher man, will you pray for me? Reach out and grab their hand and start praying. I'm like, my God in heaven, what will I say? Now, I don't sound like I'm too short of words, do I? It's okay if you say yes. But see, at that point, I didn't know what to say. So it's like two days later, I'm in a, I'm at a funeral of a fallen soldier. And uh, this guy walks up and says, preacher man, will you pray for me? I just reached out and grabbed his hand and said, yeah, what do you want me to pray for? And he just kind of looked at me. I'm like, wait, you want me to pray now or later? When do you need an answer? Well, I need an answer right now. So he told me, this is what I prayed. I said, Lord, I know, we'll say Bill. I know Bill, but I don't know that, I got his hand, but I don't know this situation. But you've never missed one second of Bill's life. And you know exactly what's going on. And I put my prayer of agreement with his that he will see who you are and see this answer come to him quickly. 
In Jesus' name, amen. A very short, simple prayer. When I let go of his hand, opened my eyes and looked, this big old biker is standing there crying. And he said, that's the most amazing prayer that you've ever, I've ever heard anybody pray. And I said, well, why would you say that, sir? He said, because you just asked God to talk to me. I said, well, it ain't going to do no good for him to talk to me. You're the one that needs the answer. He goes, that is amazing. He just was, he was, I think, number one, nobody would ever grabbed his hand and prayed for him. We'll pray with that in just a minute. Number two, he probably was. Knowing who it was, he was probably not real proud of some of the things he had done. <laughs> we could say being a sinning biker. But I didn't judge him. I asked God to reveal himself to him. That's what I prayed over Phil. May God reveal himself to wait. Do you know what? Leanne and I pray over you guys every single day. May God reveal himself to you. To you. Amen. May the eyes of your understanding be flooded with enlightenment. May everywhere you go and everything you do just scream in your face. God is working on your behalf. Why? Because God wants you to know who he is. Now, I'm going to pause, and we're going to prayer for Julian and Vamala's daughter, Joanne, who had to have this stupid COVID shot. Now, we bound the effect of this thing the other day. Now, let's right now go after it again in Jesus' mighty name. Ready? Wait, flex your fingers a little bit. Remember how you used to pop your knuckles? Flex your shoulders. Anybody want to just flex a little bit? Wait, get your Bible out, wave it around. Pastor, why are you doing all? Uh, probably not a whole lot of reasons to do that. But, uh, it is with great honor. It is with great boldness. It is with great tenacity that this body of believers speaks Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, 27, 28, and 29. We are fruitful. We multiply. We subdue this earth. And we take dominion on this earth. You follow. You follow. Um, What's that word, Jesus? Shangamba Stipalokanovan at some of You foul uh, result. That's not the word I'm looking for, but you foul result uh, effect of this of this shot. We command you stop. Stop now. By the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Julian and Bamala are tithers. Julian and Vamalo live in the blood of Jesus. Julian and Vamala have prayed the prayer for a year now that says, by the blood of Jesus, the plague has to pass over and cannot be on me or my family. Get off Joanne Amen. now and your vile, vile, foul effects. I go now to Mark chapter 16. And I stand on those verses where Jesus said, if you drink anything deadly, it will not affect you. She didn't drink it. Somebody shot it in her body. And it was against her will. And she didn't want it. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, according to Mark chapter 16, verse number 17 and 18, it will have no effect, no deadly poison will have any mean, by any means hurt you. And we lay hands on the sick and they recover. 
Jesus said, I have given you power over all the power of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you in any way. Joanne, Julian, and Bamala's daughter, we declare right now in Jesus' name, be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Mark chapter 16, verses 19 and 20 says that the apostles went out and preached, and the Lord working with them confirmed his word with signs following. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we thoroughly expect this to change right now by the word of God that's being spoken. By the manifest presence of God that's flowing in this room. Right here. Right now. Today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that feel a prayer of faith coming on you. That you would like to pray for Sister Joanne. Type it in in a reply to Julian and Vamala, so that they can take that prayer and say, Joanne, here's a prayer that came from the community of faith and from the believers from all around the world standing in faith. We speak life. Everybody say it. I speak life, I speak life. To, Joanne. to Joanne and life more abundantly Fill every cell of her body. Joanne's body receive life in the name of the name Jesus. Acts 4, 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit of power and how he anointed me too. And we went about, go about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Because God is with us and in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, if in Joanne's life, she is has a fear of a sin that she's committed. I don't know, Joanne, Jesus, you do. But according to the book of John, you told me that whoever sins we remit, they'll be remitted. And if there's a sin inside of her, as a minister of reconciliation, we declare right now that sin is remitted so that she has confidence on the inside I'm right before God Almighty right now. Tonight. And then that power of God flows from the inside out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare in Jesus' mighty, awesome, powerful, wonderful name that the Holy Spirit of God that's on the inside of her produces life from the inside out. In the name of Jesus. What do you call that thing? The shot? What do you call that? A vaccine. A vaccine. Well, well, how in the world do I say that? I speak to you, you not vaccine. Because they're all saying it's not a vaccine. It's not been tested. An inoculation. I, I speak to you, you not vaccine. Your power is broken. Every chemical effect in her body is broken. Jesus Christ of Nazareth lives on the inside of me, giving us life and power and strength and might and dominion. And we speak it for our sister Joanne right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say this with me. Say, thank God for healing. Thank God for healing. Our sister Joanne. Now, I don't feel like I can sing tonight, but I'm going to sing right now. And I want you to sing with me. Now, tonight as we sing, I'm going to turn Sister Felicia's mic on so you guys can all hear her. <laughs> Wait, that's a joke. <laughs> 
I have no ability to turn anybody's mic on. <laughs> you see Felicia going, turn it off, turn it off. <clears throat> Let's sing this song we always sing. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Jesus, we give you the glory. And we give you the honor. And we give you the praise. Most certainly, we are your voice on this earth as we pray. And all of us speaking together tonight, that prayer of agreement is working. We don't know why you ask us for the prayer of agreement. We just do it because you ask. But all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise belongs to you, Jesus. We know, Jesus, that who we are is only because we're standing in your righteousness because your blood has purged our life from every sin. And we stand in your righteousness and we declare your word as if you were the one on this earth standing here right now speaking it because we're your ambassadors. We are your ministers of reconciliation. We are heirs of God and we are joint heirs with you, Jesus. And we speak it done and we give you the glory and we give you the honor and we give you the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty, <clears throat> mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Don't you like being on the winning side? We win. Julian and Babala, you tell her. You tell her. Make sure you tell her. We're praying and we win. Love him. I want to make sure we give him a prayer cloth. Yeah. I don't see any. I, I probably have them in the computer bag. Oh, that's where they are. Right, right, right. They got you. That's right. Now. Felicia said she'll sing. Felicia said she'll sing. We just need to send her a hymn book. Don't you just love this program? This is literally what it's like every time we come. Julian and Vamala have been our friends now for a year. We didn't know them before the pandemic. But um, here's the cool thing about it. We just prayed a prayer. I think they said she's in Spain, right? I don't remember. She's, we just prayed a prayer that immediately went all the way around the world. 10,000 miles away. This prayer we just prayed went 10,000 miles away. Wait. That fast. 
I mean, that's slow, actually. Because because God moves so fast, I can't move my hands that fast to clap it. Because we're going to be raptured in a moment. The twinkling of an eye. The twinkling of an eye is a lot faster than you can clap your hands physically. And that prayer and that dominion and that might and that strength and that honor and that glory went all the way around the world because you and I know who we are in Jesus. I know people don't usually scream like that in church, but I do. Who knows where we are? Nobody knows. It's Saturday Night Live. What difference does it make where we are? Amen. Wait, some of you was just starting to put your red dress on baby right now. So we might as well have a big time in God. Amen. <clears throat> I want to go to Matthew 13. Isn't that where I said we was going? You got to be a... <laughs> <laughs> Phil's been with us three nights and he's already got me figured out. All right, that's a good thing. But you know what, Phil? I can tell you're a kindred spirit with our yes, spirit. Yes, he is. Thank you very much. I can tell you're of, uh, you're, as the old saying goes, you're cut of the same cloth as we are. This is who you are. And God. Got you all the way from Billings, Montana to Wilson, North Dakota to find us. Thank you, Lord. Now, I don't, Thank you, Lord. I hope you guys see how big that actually is. Mm -hmm. we love her, Wait, and then got me to be sitting on that picnic table. Because we started, Leanne and I started having this thought we want to be outside. We have been in this room for what 460 days. No, we're we're mobile a lot. Well that's all right, so that's 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 not the right number. But so remember last week when we went out to the lake and we saw the Pelicans yeah. and we did the program out there that night. Mm -hmm. Well that was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it and I thought like, that's cool. But um there was a whole lot of bugs out there. There right. was, and there was a raccoon that covered her ears when we started. That singing. that raccoon was laying right there, and when we started singing, she literally took her paw and stuck it right in her ear. Yeah, she did. It's on video. It's hilarious. Then you wonder where the pelican went. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's true. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome, Julian and Vamala. We love you. We want to update on you guys too, and how you're doing in Penang. But, but wait, I want you to see this infallible proof. Because we're like, that's it. We're going outside. It was hot, you know, and I'm I'm just done being in it. So we go down there, but the next night I'm like, you know what? I just don't feel like going back to the lake. The next night was like, we're going to the park. And we went to the park, and there you walk up. Now, brother, Yay. everybody listening, it is God moving beyond anything anybody can see. Don't think it's me. What am I going to do to make that happen? <laughs> but listen, this is God. Guiding in the affairs of man. What is he doing? Acts 1 3. He is revealed, Jesus is revealing himself to you, to me, Brother Phil. Wait, how many thousands of people we have never even heard their name has God ministered to? I mean, there's times I go back and look at previous videos. Some of them have had three, four, five hundred views. Why? Somebody got it, shared it, shared it somewhere else, sent it to somebody. And and these videos 
are going out into the world changing people's lives. Why? Because yeah. Jesus is revealing himself to you and me and teaching us things about his kingdom. Teaching us things about his kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us about your kingdom. Matthew chapter 13. Now, I know we've, we've been in this chapter a lot. And I'm just going to read these first few verses here. You know, like 60 of them or something. <laughs> I'm going to read um, verses 1 to 17. And then we'll receive communion. If you guys want to hang out later than that, I saw Felicia ask a question about um, speaking in tongues. If you want to hang out a little longer than that, um, after communion, we'll answer that question. And we'll talk about that some more. Uh, that gives everybody who's got to take off and get to bed or whatever, that gives you an opportunity to do that as soon as we read this. But there's a verse in Psalm that says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Can you find that verse for me? Yeah. <laughs> Felicia said, I'm here all night. <laughs> Listen, that one night, I literally sat in this chair for five hours. It was so much fun that night to watch God move that we just stayed here and going. All right? Not saying it's going to be five hours tonight. Here we go. Matthew 13. Yeah. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house. Jesus actually had a house in Capernaum. Many people thought Jesus was just a wayfaring stranger, with no place to live. But um, Jesus had a house in Capernaum. And greater multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and he sat and the multitude stood on the shore. That's good thinking because the water would broadcast his voice. He spoke many things to them by parables saying, behold, a sower went out to sow and he sowed some seed and it fell by the wayside and the birds came and ate it. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth. Immediately the seed would spring up. And because it had no depth of earth, when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Number uh, verse seven. Some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them. Others fell on good ground. And yielded a crop, some 30-fold, wait, some 100-fold, some 60, and some 30. Verse 9, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Do this, just everybody look up. These are not just glasses holders and hat holders. The ears that Jesus are talking about are the ears that's down in here. Say this with me. I open up my ears to hear. Because here's the revelation, guys. If we don't choose to hear the word, it'll just be another thought going through our brain. Watch what Jesus says. Verse 10. The disciples came to him and said, why do we teach in parables? And he answered them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. Say this with me. It's given to me to know, to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The of the kingdom. How many of you want to really know everything this Bible is all about? I, 
My mom's with me tonight. I see just said mom's watching again. I stood in my mom's kitchen one day as an adult man. And I said to her, I said, you know, mom, if I just knew the amount of word of the Bible that the gospel singer Carmen sings in his songs, I would be so much farther down the road spirits. And today I not only know all the words of those songs, but God has taken this book and it's no longer a difficult book to me. It all makes sense. I don't care what you ask me. I'm going to show you the answer in Genesis, the revelation. And all the way through the middle. Why? Because God taught me to chase his word no matter what. See, that's what Jesus is saying. To you, it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But watch. But to them, it has not been given. Verse 12. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Verse number 13. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they don't see. Hearing they don't hear. And they do not understand. Now look at verse 14. In them who don't understand is this prophecy revealed. Hearing you will hear and not understand. Seeing you will see and not perceive. Look at verse 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. That's a scary thought. Do you know what makes our hearts grow dull? A decision on the inside of us. Because nobody can dull your heart except you. Night, Sunday. We love you. Yeah, they are ears that want to hear. Amen. That's a good word, Mom. Say it. My ears want to hear. Ears See, wait. Hear. Wait. There ain't a one of us sitting here tonight that wants to have somebody hand us a religious book that you sit down and start reading that is filled with a man giving you a whole bunch of human words trying to explain something spiritually that he has no idea about. Where'd my book go? <laughs> um, I don't know. There was a book and now it's gone. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. I got two books right there. I got three books. As you can see, this is a Bible. That's a well-used Bible right there, bro. That Bible's traveled probably 50,000 miles in a semi on the dash. That's a good Bible. Here's my book of the Revelation class. This is so much information and revelation to me. I could sit down and read this every day. I'd never get tired of this book. Why? It's filled with revelation, not biblical information. This book right here is called Driven by Eternity by a man named John Bevere. This book will rock your world and change your life. But do you know what John said when he wrote it? He said, I'd be sitting there in the middle of the night writing. And he said, I'd just jump up and say, oh, my God, did you just see what I just wrote? And he said, I would sit back down and say, that's amazing. Well, pastor, isn't that a little prideful? And John said this because he said, if you knew my grades in English in college, you would look at this book and say, how did that man write that book? Why? Why? Because he wasn't the writer. 
He was just the scribe. You want a book that'll rock your world and change your life? But wait, I got one more book. You see this one? Bible charts, maps, and timelines. If you tried to get me to sit down tomorrow to read from page one, To page number you don't even have to page number 221 I would get bored because all it is is a bunch of information it doesn't have revelation it's just information it becomes studious and hard and laborious but wait when I wanted to see Paul's uh, missionary trip. Oh, well, well, wow, check this out. There's a map. Do you notice I'm going by all the pages? Wait, there's a map in here. I'm going by all the pages. Why? Because I'm not concerned about all that. I want to see the Apostle Paul's missionary trip. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Guess what? It's page 189. I'll be at this page over and over and over again. I want you to see this. Jesus is saying to these people, I'm not trying to get you to study and get intellectual head knowledge. I want you to open up your heart and receive the revelation of God. When Jesus said in verse 12, to him who has more will be given, what Jesus is saying is, the Father rewards people who get revelation. You can memorize the whole book and miss heaven. Let me try it again. You can memorize the whole book and miss heaven if you don't let the book get on the inside of you. And, and I want you to see this. Verse 20. Uh, we got to just read it. 18 through 23 and then we'll be done. Matthew, Matthew 13, 18 through 23. So then Jesus starts explaining this. Now watch. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, do you remember that's what Jesus reveals himself to, is to show us the ways of the kingdom? When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and takes that word away which was sown in his heart these are those who receive the word on the wayside say this with me i got to get some revelation got to get some revelation see wait the sower then took the seed and sowed it like this wayside is where everybody walks it's hard so it doesn't grow. Keep going. He who received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root and only endures for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, he immediately stumbles. Now watch. Why does persecution and tribulation come? Not because God wants to test you and see how tough you are or give you a glory testimony about your own self-righteousness. No. The test comes from the devil 
to steal the word from you. He's not trying to steal your Bible. He's trying to steal that word yeah. that's down inside your heart. And how does he do it? Look what it says. Persecution, tribulation, arise because the word is in here. That lady I told you about earlier, the word hit, revealed her life, and her whole family left her. Why did tribulation come? Because she found the word that set people free. That lady could cast a demon out at 50 paces, man. She was one prayer warrior, one prayer warrior woman. And she could hit like a high C, so she could probably bust the windows out of the house while she's doing it if you needed to do it. 22, he who received the, the seed among thorns is he who hears the word. Now watch this. But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desire for other things than the word, choke it. Have you ever been there? I have. I get a word, I get a word, I get a word, I get a word, I get a word. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then all of a sudden, it's five days later. And you're like, has anybody seen where that word is I had? <laughs> Why? The cares of this world. What is that? Your job, your house, your yard, your dog, your cat, your chickens, whatever you got. Your wife, your kids, your family, cares of this world. The deceitfulness of riches. God wants every one of us blessed abundantly. God blessed Job to where he had twice as much. So God don't have a problem with you being rich. He has a problem when rich has a hold of you. Amen. Now watch, persecutions, trials, deceitfulnesses of riches, and the cares of the world are the four things that choke the word and make it become unfruitful. Pastor, how in the world do I win? You take this word and you get you one set of verses and you say, that's it. I, I don't, doesn't matter what pastor preaches. I'm going to get this one set of verses and they're going to go down in, down in, down in, down in, down in until I got to clip them on my toenails and it'll clip off and say the word, the word, the word, the word. Why? Because I'm going to get this word inside of my life. Amen. I'll give you an example. This chapter right here, chapter 13, on January 5th, 2021, I heard a man preach this chapter, and he said, do you realize that all the revelation you want is available to you? It's up to you to decide to get it. So, you guys have been hearing me on 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, all week. Do you know why? Because Sister Leanne and I are on 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, until it manifests in ways we ain't never seen. How many times do you think we spoke that verse yesterday? 50? Letter. Letter. Well, Pastor, why are you doing it? Because that verse says this, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Go there. And really, I'm, I'm really, I really am done. Communion is next. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. This is what it's been sounding like in this apartment for a month. It don't matter what happens, what any of you type, what message we get or email. This is what I say. Second Corinthians 9 8. And God is making all grace about that we always, having all sufficiency in all things, 
have an abundance to every good work. And five minutes later, I say, Alien, guess what? God is making all grace abound. And then you know what I did? I opened up my phone and I made a note. You know what it's called? And God is making all grace abound. You know why? Because when I can't read it, I'm going to turn this on. Watch this. And I'm going to listen to it. Ready? I don't, I don't get it. It, it. That only makes sense. Yeah. It's so quiet. It's so quiet. I, 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 now I got this guy preaching at me. What's up with that? Please get your communion elements ready because we're going to receive communion. I want you to get this point. And honestly, if you guys have more questions, uh, when we're done with communion, we can come back in there and do it again. I want you to see this. The way you get these verses to get in your heart. Since January 5th of 2020. I'll bet you I have read Matthew 13. Mark 4 and Luke 8. 150 times a piece each. Of them. Why? Because Jesus said. To him that has. Revelation, more will be given. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get the revelation. Because Jesus said that when you get it, if you understand that specific parable, Jesus said you will understand every parable in the Bible when you understand that one about the seed and, the, and, the, and uh, being sown in the ground. So when I saw that, I just said, well, guess what? That's my next set of verses. I'm going to read it. I'm going to live it. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to dive into it. And when, when I get to heaven, heaven's going to be shouting. Well, one thing about you, you've got the revelation of that verse. You know what's come from that study? Community of faith. That's what that produced is this right here. Why? Because since we began on March 21st, we have never backed off of the statements of this. We are going in and we're going up and we're going in to take the land of the promise. And you know what? There ain't no devil in hell can stop us. God already crushed him. No human can stand in the way. So guess what? We are going in and we're going to grab a hold of these verses and we're going to wring the anointing out of these verses, whether anybody likes it or don't like it. It does not matter. They, you can call me crazy if you want to. Thank you. Just make sure you say I have the mind of Christ because that's what I'm going to have. And I will not stop until I get it. That mind of Christ. Now, let's pray. And honestly, if you guys want to stick around and talk later after communion, I'll do it with you. But we got to have a break point here so people that need to go to bed can go to bed. Because it is 1030 at night in Michigan. Let's pray. Father, as a matter of fact, everybody pray this. It's going to be a short prayer. Pray it with me. Say, Father. Father, no matter what I've known, no matter what I've known, or not known, or not known, I receive your word. I receive your word working in my life, working in my life in a great and powerful way. In a great and powerful way, I thank you for the revelation. I thank you for the revelation, and I run in it in Jesus' mighty name. And I run in it in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Here's the thing about God. If you want the revelation, he's going to give it to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. And that's what we're after. 
And now let's receive our communion elements together. Remember, our communion service is very specifically designed by the Father to reach many different people. There are many people who come to re receive communion and they don't know anything about God. So we never know when a new person is here. So his instruction to me is to read all the verses, make sure we pray a prayer of salvation so people are right with God, bless the elements, and then receive the communion. So it takes a little longer than some churches where they say, Jesus took the bread, now you take it. Jesus took the cup, now you take it, and we're done in one minute. If that's what God told them to do, then that's what God told them to do. I'm going to be faithful to his assignment to me in this program because whenever someone comes that doesn't know, when they get done with the program, they will know, and it'll be right. You ready? Let's, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that on the same night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. When he had broke it, he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same manner after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work. Until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread. And drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves. We would not be judged. First John chapter 4 verse 17 and 18. Love has been perfected among us. In this. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. <laughs> Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now watch. The communion elements should have no fear or judgment. Can you imagine the father punishing Jesus for all of our sins? And then somebody show up here that needs the blood to work for him. And the father says, oh, no, sir, you sinned this week. You don't get to have the very thing that is your answer. How does that make sense? How does that make any sense? What it is, is they read verse 23 through 27 and stop. And they don't read verse 28 that says, well, let the man examine himself and then take of the bread and take of the cup. You got to read the whole chapter, guys. And you got to let the whole chapter say what the whole chapter say in Jesus' mighty name. Now, here we go. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation, the prayer of rededication, and the prayer of just hallelujah, I'm a child of God. You might say, right now, I say it right now, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a child of God. Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus' name. I know I need you in my life. I know I need you in my life. In every area. And according to John chapter 1. And according to John When I believe in you, Jesus. When I believe in you, Jesus. And I receive you, Jesus. And I receive you. You give me the power. You give me the power. To become a child of God. To become a child of God. And Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. And then just reach your hands up and say, and I receive. And I receive you. Into Jesus, my life. Into my life. Right now. Right. Make a big ball of sin, toss them out the window and say, there's all my sin. There's all my sin. I cannot beat it in my own strength. I beat it in my Ready? Own strength. 
reach out like this and say, I receive all of your righteousness. I receive all of your oh, righteousness. Oh, Jesus, manifest yourself. Please. We receive all of your righteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the word of God. Pray in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. And live a successful life. As a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. You did it. There's the prayer. And that one prayer, you went from darkness to light. You went from fear to faith. You went from your sin, which you can't beat. Nobody could ever. To Jesus' righteousness, which obliterates the sin. And he makes you his righteousness. And that one prayer. God adopted you as his child. Somebody ought to say glory, hallelujah, to the newborn king. He makes you a minister of reconciliation. They got my email address and website in there. I want you to send me an email and say, Pastor, send me those verses and a couple teachings so I can understand the most foundation verses of the Bible. Why? Because as soon as you get those foundation verses in here, you will never again another day ever be found anywhere except right in the kingdom of God where the Father wants you in Jesus mighty name now all of this is based on your desire and you know what anybody with the nature of, of a human it was put there by God Almighty and you know what? Nature itself shows you that God is real. And now we're going to receive these elements together. And we're going to receive his blood shed and his body broken. Some people don't like my little shot cup I got here. But this ain't a shot cup. This is a communion cup. Now watch. Though your sins were red like scarlet, they will be as white as snow when you put the blood of Jesus into the middle of it. The first day I saw these on a shelf, I said, well, that's my communion cup for the rest of my ministry because there it is in an object lesson every time we take it. My sins were red like crimson. I added the blood of Jesus, and now they're white as snow. You ready? Let's bless our elements, and we'll receive them. Pray this with me. I bless these elements, bless these elements. for this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded for my transgression. For my transgression. And, I thank you. and I thank you. You were bruised for my iniquity. You were bruised for my iniquity. And, I and I thank you. The chastisement for my peace, the chastisement for my peace. is upon you, Lord. Is upon you, Lord. And by your stripes, and, I'm healed. And by your stripes, I am healed. Get real bold. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotion. In my mind, my will, and my nothing emotion. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your broken body, Jesus. From your broken body. Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community. In Jesus' faith. mighty name. In Jesus' name. Let's mighty receive name. the bread together. Thank you, Jesus. That for the joy that was set before you. He endured the cross, despised the shame, 
sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. We now lift up the cup of blessing. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. The most powerful cleansing force. The most powerful cleansing force. On the face of this earth. On the face of this earth. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. I have been reconciled. I have been reconciled. To the Father. To my Father. All of my sins are placed in remission. All of my sins are placed in remission. And I'm a new creation. And I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have passed away. And all things become new. And all things have become new. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague, every plague has to pass over. Has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I come boldly. I come boldly to the throne room of grace. To the throne room of grace. Where I find grace, mercy, and help. Help. Where I find grace, yeah. mercy, and help. For my assignment every day. For my assignment every day. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. My conscience is purged. My conscience is purged. My robes are made white. My robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will the glorious, church, the glorious church, without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. When you come for me. When you come for me. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's receive the juice together. Glory, hallelujah! You ready? The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never it's I can hear Andre Crouch singing it because he sings it in a special way, but he wrote it. All right, it soothes my dad and calms. I mean, the man could sing, Andre Crouch could sing, and I'm not going to try to sing like him. Call Felicia Iker tonight and she'll sing like him. Yeah. <laughs> well, blessings on everybody tonight. Amen. That was a good word tonight. Say it with me. God is revealing himself to me. God is revealing himself to me. And I get all of him I want. And I get all of him I want. Every bit. I love this. Nobody can stop you from receiving except you. Nobody. The devil can't stop you. Persecutions can't. Trials can't. Tests can't. Just so everybody knows, I've been in a couple of trials, tests, and persecutions in my life when the only verse that made sense was that his blood had purged every one of my sins and that blood was empowering me to live that day. I've been there before. So I don't think I'm, I'm somebody that lives way above and never had to deal with it. But here's the truth. On that day, I looked up to heaven and said, Lord, today, this blood better work. I need the blood to work today. If there's any day it's going to work, it better be today. And guess what? It not only worked, 
But those days are long gone. I don't live in fear. I don't live in I don't live in fear of humans. I just don't. I don't care. If you love me, love me. If you don't, I what am I gonna do? I can't make you love me. Do you know how tired you can get trying to make somebody love you that don't? Like pretty really. <laughs> pretty really? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, let ready for this. I do love you. Yes, do. This thing just, you guys are just talking, man. <laughs> love it. Love you all too. I'm still here. Just always want to make sure I say that every time I'm on so people know I care. Well, Felicia, everybody knows you care. Everybody knows we you. We really know you cared if you would sing to us, though. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually call in on Blog Talk Radio and sing to us if you want, Felicia. <laughs> Love and blessings to all. Now, have I missed any other valuable questions except the question on tongues? Mary asked a good one about self-righteousness. Why would those that endure trials and tribulations and testifies be called self-righteous? But that really isn't what the self-righteous is called. Pin it. So I can grab it. Why would those who endure trials and tribulation and test be called self-righteous? I, they wouldn't be called self-righteous. We don't have any. Well, no. Well, okay. That's, that's a good. That's a good way to say it. Brother Phil just said the way they could be self-righteous if they feel like they're better than them, everybody else because they endured that. So if that's what you're saying, that's a good question. And if I said something to that effect. I didn't mean that. However, if you are enduring trials, temptations, and tribulations, and coming out on top of them, not using it as an example of how holy you are, because God gave you a trial and you bore up underneath of it, can you see how holy I am? That is not God. Because then you get the glory. And Jesus is the one that gets the glory, not me. Amen. Not you. But we might have to spend another hour on that. I know this. If you guys are going to stick around so I can talk about it, I do need to be gone for a couple minutes. So are you guys sticking around? Mary, um, Felicia, you guys sticking around? Everybody's just sitting looking. <laughs> I know. Like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> if anybody wants Pastor to come back on in a little bit, we can do that. How was that rather than them just having to sit? Yes, that would be very good. Yeah. All right. Private message us if you want Pastor to come back on. All so right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back on in about five minutes, 10, whatever. I'm going to come back on and I'm going to talk for 30 minutes about tongues. All right. So I'll be back. But that way, that's a really good plan, love, that I close this out so that it's not an 18 hour long video. And then I come back on in a couple minutes. That way you're not just st sitting here staring at yeah. an open thing. So go potty and get a snack and something to drink. And we'll be Everybody back. go potty. To get a snack and we'll be back in a few minutes. Are you ready? This is what we say every time we come here. We love you. And God loves you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. We'll be back in a minute. Yeah, that's good. It's a good plan. 